Okay, so in this short video, I'm gonna to try to sketch through the calculation that gets you to the maximum mass of a white dwarf, which is also known as a Chandrasekhar limit. Um, white dwarfs are weird because they're held up by degeneracy pressure, so that means that there's some unusual things that happen. So for example, um, it causes the radius to decrease as the mass increases, which means they hit a limit where they're no longer able to be held up, they become too dense and they collapse to neutron stars. Uh, fundamentally, it's a quantum mechanical thing which holds up uh, neutron stars, which describes degeneracy pressure. And in quantum mechanics, there's this thing called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, that you can't know both the position and the momentum of a particle, um, the product of them, any better than this uh, constant h-bar over 2. Um, so in order to understand degeneracy pressure, um, which we're going to, uh, basically, we're going to say that momentum, we're going to ignore relativity, is uh, the mass of the electron times uh, the velocity of the electron. So the degeneracy velocity, the velocity they must have if they're squeezed into a tiny space. Um, we're going to say that the pressure is caused by that velocity of those electrons, kind of slightly hand wavy -y. And so to work out um, what that velocity has to be, um, we need to figure out how much volume each electron has in a neutron star. Um, so, neutron star, I mean a white dwarf. So white dwarfs are made either, typically, in the real universe anyway, you get helium white dwarfs, carbon, oxygen, or at least these are the, the primary um, atoms that make up white dwarfs. So if you just remember the atomic structure, uh, it's not just the atomic structure, but the number of um, protons, neutrons, and electrons each of these have. A helium atom has two protons, two neutrons, two electrons. Carbon has six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Oxygen has eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons. Basically, for all of these elements, for every electron there's two uh, times the mass of the proton worth of mass so the number of electrons in a typical uh, white dwarf is just going to be the mass of the white dwarf the total mass which I use capital M for divided by two times the mass of the proton the volume is obviously the volume of the sphere so it's four thirds pi <laughs> are cubed. <laughs> um, so the little element of volume each of these Ne electrons can have, which we'll call um, delta V for a little bit of volume, it's just going to be total V uh, divided by the number of electrons, right? Um, one thing I want you to notice at this point is that the number density of electrons is the number of electrons divided by the volume of the star. So our little delta V is actually 1 over the number density of electrons, which kind of makes sense if you think about the units. Okay. Um, so for the, so let's imagine each of these electrons is a little tiny box. I'm not going to worry about factors and things being spherical and things like that. Um, so the position uh, that they're constrained to, um, if there's this many electrons in, in the entire neutron star, is going to be... Um, the volume they're constrained to to the third power. So it's going to be uh, the number density of electrons to the minus one third. Okay, so if we consider um, this to be the position they're constrained to, we can, that tells us the um, minimum velocity they're allowed to have um, to abide by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Um, so remember again, delta x delta p equals a h bar over 2 is going to be the minimum. So delta x is uh, the number density of the electron to the third power. Momentum is mass times the degeneracy velocity. If you rearrange this, you get a degeneracy velocity, the, the minimum velocity they're allowed to have, is going to be equal to h bar, number density of the electrons to the third power, divided by 2 times the mass of the electron. So this is the velocity that goes into um, the equations for what the pressure is that holds up uh, the white dwarf. Um, so there's obviously a limit here, right? An absolute limit here is when uh, the degeneracy velocity uh, is equal to the speed of light. 
So when that happens, um, our h bar, number density of electron to the third power divided by two times the mass of the electron, is going to be equal to c. So this is basically a maximum number density of electrons, or a minimum volume, minimum radius, um, that we're allowed to have for um, a white dwarf. So if we think about this, uh, the minimum volume, and I'm going to start dropping uh, numerical factors at this point, which might make you unhappy, but there are a lot of details here that we can't get right, so actually keeping the numerical factors along doesn't really matter too much. Um, the minimum uh, volume of a white dwarf is, roughly speaking, its minimum radius cubed. Um, and it's also going to be equal to the number of electrons times this minimum space that they're in cubed. Remember from Heisenberg uncertainty principle, delta x, so roughly h bar over mec. I dropped the two. I know I dropped the two, but like I said, factors of two aren't going to make a big difference here. <clears throat> so if we put that in, take the cube root, the minimum radius uh, that a neutron star is allowed to have is the number density of electrons to the third power h bar over mec. Uh, we're really interested in the minimum mass, um, so let's put in the number of electrons in terms of the mass, right? So this is going to be the mass of the white dwarf to the third power divided by the mass of the proton to the third power. It counts the number of electrons, and again, I've dropped a factor of two, h bar over mass of the electron, speed of light. Okay, so this is a relationship between the minimum radius and the minimum mass of a white dwarf. We really, we want to basically get rid of one of these variables. Um, and the way we can do that is by looking at the mass radius relationship. White dwarfs, even though they're held up by degeneracy pressure, are still spheres of approximately constant density that um, are under hydrostatic equilibrium. That means the central pressure of them can be expressed as 3gm squared over 8 pi r to the fourth power, um, which is a standard result um, that we went through for hydrostatic equilibrium of a sphere of constant density. If this is um, the maximum pressure, this is going to be the maximum degeneracy pressure, or this is going to be the degeneracy pressure of the white dwarf, right? Um, and we're going to express uh, the degeneracy pressure as the number of electrons, the mass of the electron, and then the degeneracy velocity squared. <clears throat> and if we put what we calculated in the last slide in for degeneracy pressure, this is going to be h bar, number density electron to the 5 thirds, For the mass of the electron. Maybe there's a factor of four there. If you rearrange this equation, so you rearrange uh, 3gm squared over 8 pi r to the fourth equals h bar ne to the 5 thirds over me, you will get a relationship for the mass radius uh, relationship of white dwarfs, which is the radius is equal to some number h bar squared over gme mass of the proton to the five thirds and then the mass the minus a third so how have I got the mass of the star in here well there's obviously a mass here in the mass radius relationship um, also remember you need to put the number density of electrons in as the number of electrons divided by the volume of the star so that um, that is another bit to do okay so now let's go ahead and put this in as our minimum radius of a star and that will get, allow us to find the maximum mass do it on the next slide. So we said that the generic um, radius of a neutron star is some number, which I'm not going to care about, h bar squared over g mass of the electron, mass of the proton to the 5 thirds, m to the minus a third. And we said that the minimum radius that's allowed when the neutron stars, are, um, when the electrons are starting to go at the speed of light is um, the mass to the third power divided by the mass of the proton to the third power, h bar over the mass of the electron times the speed of light. So let's set these equal to each other and do some sums. So we're going to have m to the third, h over mv to the third, mass of the electron c equal to h bar squared over g m e m p to the five thirds m to the minus a third. And let's <clears throat> rearrange some things. Um, so, oops, 
one of the H's is going to cancel. Um, some of the mass of the proton will cancel. We'll get the M to the two thirds. Um, and if we do all of this rearranging, you'll find an expression for the maximum mass of a neutron of a, a white dwarf. Goodness me, is H bar C over G mass of the proton um, to the four thirds. All of that to the three over two, which is otherwise known as H bar C over G to the three over two. 1 over the mass of the proton squared. Okay, if you calculate this number and you put in SI units and then convert it to solar masses, this should be 1.8 solar masses. You will notice that I dropped some factors of numbers and pi's here. Um, if you keep those, you might get something that is not exactly 1.8 solar masses. The actual um, doing it all carefully um, Worrying about relativity, all of the details thing will give you a maximum mass of 1.4 solar masses, which is the Chandrasekhar mass. Um, but this uh, version where we drop lots of factors of order unity um, and um, use some approximations gets us pretty close, 1.8 solar masses. So hopefully that was clear and you can um, explain it in your own words and have a go at doing this in your homework.